In the previous video, I explained my initial goals, discussed possible solutions for my lab, and finished with the chosen solution, which is home lab based on Intel NUC platform. Previously, I called it Nuke, but I watched a couple of videos, and now I know correct spelling. Now, let's talk about hardware. At first, let's take a look at high-level architecture. Every cloud solution, by cloud here I imply vSphere, needs three components – compute, storage, and network. Compute nodes, in our case, are NUX. I have three nodes, both for redundancy and performance. Each node has its CPU, RAM, local SSD drive, and built-in net network interface card or controller. Storage component, component in this design is a NAS appliance, which provides pretty big LAN over the network using iSkyZ protocol. And of course, I have some underlay physical network, which does all the switching, inter-VLAN routing, provides access to the internet and some services like DNS, NTP and DHCP, which is very, very useful during initial deployment. Now, let's take a look at each component. As I have mentioned before, Intel NUX is a compute platform. I mentioned in the previous video a Wikipedia page about this product, which I highly recommend to read. In my case, I have three identical platforms, which are called NUC 7i5 B and H. It is the seventh generation product, which has Intel Core i5 CPU with two cores and four threads. So from this first standpoint, it sees four logical processors uh, or four vCPUs. Also, I need to mention that you can change CPU on this platform, so be careful when you choose your NUC. There is a platform with i7, 4 cores and 8 rates, for example. In terms of RAM, you have to know that NUC is using S, uh, SO DIMM, form factor which is a small RAM uh, stick designed for laptops. Here you can see it in red color. Uh, you can see that I use three different models, but I don't mix them inside one NUC. I would have bought the same model if uh, it was available on the market in that quantity. I will put these uh, long part numbers in the description of this video, so I don't have to spell them. Now I just want to mention that it is a DDR4 RAM with 16 gigs of memory per stick. Each NUC has two slots for RAM, which makes it 30, uh, 32 gigs of RAM per node or per NUC. Now local storage, which is also called DES, which stands for Directly Attached Storage. Again, I have three different models and let me tell you why. Initially I bought just a single NUC with one RAM stick and small SSD with uh, 60 gigs of memory. When I am sure that ASXi works, I place second order for the rest of hardware. Also I found out that 120 gigs SSD costs just 5 bucks more than 60 gigs version, so I bought a bigger one. The third SSD drive I actually found in my storage room. And let me point out that NUC platform supports new M2 SSD drives, which typically have better performance in a smaller form factor. Also pay attention to regular SSD and or HDD form factor. I think that NUC platform supports only 2.5 size, but I'm not sure about all the generations, so check it out before placing an order. Also some models supports only M2 disks and don't have a bay even for 2.5. So again, be careful. Now let's move to storage. I use QNAP D2 appliance as a NAS storage device. It has room for two HDDs or SSDs with 2.5 or 3.5 form factor. It has a variety of additional features and I believe you can also attach additional drives over USB. Anyway, I have two uh, Seagate HDD drives, each has 3 terabytes of memory. I put both drives into RAID 0. Yeah, I know that I don't have any redundancy, but capacity is more important for me in my lab environment. It presents 5 terabyte 
LAN to vSphere and has some free space for future. In terms of front-end storage protocols, this appliance has iSCSI, which I use at the moment, and it also has NFS and VAAI are also supported. Also, it has two gigabit Ethernet NICs, uh, which you can bond or channel depending on terms you prefer to use. I'm not saying that it is the best NAS appliance uh, for home, since there are a lot of models on the market and you can spend days just comparing them and reading reviews. I think that you can pick whatever you want, uh, just make sure that it supports required capacity, exposes appropriate front-end uh, protocols for vSphere, and has at least one gigabit Ethernet NIC with Regular fast Ethernet NIC, there is no way to get more than 12.5 megabytes read and write speed, which is really, really slow. I guess that's all for storage, so let's move to network. I've just mentioned NAS appliance networking, but I need to do the same for NUX. Each NUC has a built-in gigabit Ethernet NIC and ESXi recognize it without any problems. If you, see, if you need more NICs, you can buy additional USB to Ethernet adapters, install some drives and you are ready to go. You can find all the required information at virtually get a blog post. I will attach a link to the description of this video. As a core switch router, I use Microtech device. As you may know, I am a CCIE and I love Cisco equipment, but I didn't manage to find an appropriate model with a good price even on used market. So I had to buy Microtech. Actually, they make pretty good devices in terms of functionality with a very low price. But you must be aware of default settings of their devices which may expose exploits. Just Google about Microtech Winbox exploit. Uh, and be very careful, obviously, if you use the devices. I don't care much since I've already hardened my piece and I don't use it for anything except switching and interval routing. routing. I have additional router, Cisco of course, which acts as an edge router and provides some services like DNS, NTP and DHCP. So let's discuss Microtech features. It has 8 built-in gigabit Ethernet. Uh, interfaces and four SVP cages for future. It supports LACP, which I obviously won't admit since my NAS has the same capability. It is able to perform inter-VLAN routing and supports dynamic routing protocols like BGP and OSPF. I needed both for peering with my edge router and NSX domain. Inter-VLAN routing is a requirement to avoid happening. And the last but definitely not least, uh, and the last but definitely not least point is jumbo frames. If you want to run NSX, you need at least 1600 MTU. So it means uh, basically that you must have jumbo frames inside your network. Now let me summarize my setup. Give me a sec. In terms of CPU, I have three physical CPUs, six cores, 12 vCPUs, and total capacity of 13.25 GHz. I have uh, 391 gigs of SSD local storage and 5 terabytes of HDD storage. My network provides gigabit switching with jumbo frames, interval routing, LACP for aggregation, and BGP and OSPF for routing. That's all for hardware part. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. In the next video, I will show you how all the stuff is actually organized in terms of virtualization software. If you like this video, please put your thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and have a really nice day.